Hello and welcome again. So we were looking at the internal structure of uh, DES here. And so we had this picture from before. So remember, we had the 64-bit block coming into the uh, this cipher here. And we saw that that block, uh, the first thing is going to happen to that block is it's going to encounter this uh, initial permutation, which is going to permute all of the zeros and ones that are in this block here before it goes into this uh, black box that is over here. So that we call, remember, we call that the internal permutation. Now the last permutation, uh, which is the another permutation, which is closely related to this one. Remember, this is the inverse permutation of this one. It's also a permutation that is going to do something to the block that is coming from this uh, black box here, which I will explain later. And again, it's important to remember that these permutations are not affected by the a key here of the desk. Of course, this block here will be affected by the key, but not the permutations. So how is the partner permutation working? It's going to be very similar to the initial permutation. And of course, the table is going to be uh, different, but it's going to be closer related with that table that we saw. So let's look at that table now. So how does that work? How does IP inverse work? So this is the table for IP inverse. And it's exactly the same as we described it last uh, for the other one. So you're going to read the rows from top to bottom, left to right. The usual way you read English. And again, what this means is uh, if you counter this 40 here, what that means is whatever bit is in position 40 is going to be transformed in position 1. Whatever bit is in position 8 is going to be transformed in position 2. And similar for 48. So whatever is in uh, position 48 is going to be transformed in position 3. So this is the table for the IP inverse here. So let's see let's see an example here. Let's see how that let's see how that works. So let's look at an, a particular example. So let's say for example I have here my 64 bit block. Now I'm assuming that this block is the one that is coming from the black box right after the first permutation. Let me go back here and let's go back and see what that what I mean by that. So that's the block that is coming in here in this arrow. So that block that you see there was already transformed here inside this black box by some algorithm that I will describe later. Now the final permutation right before you go out of the cipher, when you get your cipher tag, that's the uh, final permutation of the uh, permutation inverse, the initial permutation inverse. So let's go back here to the example. And remember, we're going to refer to this, uh, this table a lot because it's going to tell us how to actually do the permutation. And so if I have here my 64 block bit, and again, I'm going to assume that I have some numbers there. For example, I could have a 0, a 1, 0, 0, for example. And I have, of course, some other elements here. I cannot actually write it. I don't have a space. And then let's say, for example, my finals are, let's say, 0, 1, 1. All right. So let's say, for example, I want to know where uh, the bit in position 1 is going to go. So where is this bit going to go? Position 1. So what I need to do is, in the table, I have to look for this number 1. So let's look for that number 1 here in that table. If you look at that table, that number 1 is going to be right at the bottom row, this one right here. This is the number 1 there. I'm going to mark down, that down with some color. So let's say I put that with a here purple box there. And I, I have to know what position is that 1 in that table. So basically what you need to do is you just have to count in what position it is. Uh, so you just count every row. Remember, it is eight uh, numbers. So that one will be in position 58. This one will be position 58. So if you count all these things from here, it will be position uh, 58. So one will be transformed. Whatever, it, whatever bit is in position one will be transformed to position 58 because that's where the one is. One is in position 58. So, so if I draw a picture here, so I will have to draw something like this position 58 is going to be somewhere uh, uh, before the 62 bit. So somewhere about here. So that's 58, somewhere about there. Again, I'm not doing this scale. So this uh, bit here will be transformed into that position there. Okay, So that will then be a zero. Okay. Similarly, if I want to, if I want to know where this uh, two goes, 
the position to this bit, which is a one in this case, where that goes. I have to go back to the table again and where and look where that two is. Okay, what is that two? So you have to look at it. So let's see. That two is actually right above the number one here, the one we just did. That's the two. Let me mark that with purple again. Let's use another color. So let's use that color. So that's the position two. That two is in position fifty. If you can actually count all the positions from top, uh, top to bottom, left to right, that two is gonna be at position uh, fifty. So that means the bit at position two will be transformed to a bit of position 50. So if you go back here, position 50, let's see, is gonna be somewhere around here, so position 50. Again, this is not a scale, so that will be position 50. And so the number one, uh, the position, this one, this position two will be transformed into that, into that block, so then that will be filled out with a one there. And so on. So if you actually want to know, let's do one more, so just to double check here. So let's do, for example, the last one. Let's do 64. So where will, where will 64 go? Again, go back to the table, 64, and locate what uh, 64 is. That actually is in the first row. If you look at the first row, 64 is there. Let me mark that down with the color there. So let's mark that down. This is the 64 there. It's really easy to see in this particular case that that's in position seven. So that bit, whatever that bit I have at position 64 will be transformed into position seven in this case. So if I go back down here, let me use another color there. This one will be to position seven. So let's do seven, seven. Again, this is not a scale. So this is gonna be seven. Some, so seven will be somewhere over there, that position that I'm marking down over there. That will be position seven. And of course that bit 64 will be transformed into that position there. So in that case, because I have a one in the position, then I'll have a one over here and so on and so forth. Of course, you're not, you're not gonna do this by hand because it's gonna take a long time. Um, so that's how the other permutation works. If you actually combine the two, for example, if you do this, suppose you have, let me, let me add one page here to this. Let me go to the next page. If you if you have that, for example, x i is uh, a bit in position in some position, and then you say I have my initial permutation, and I put it in the position whatever that position my initial permutation tells me, and then I do the i p inverse. That doesn't do anything, so it doesn't change the position at all. So it gives me the same bit at the same position. So one is the inverse of the other. If you want, you can check that actually. That if you have, for example, if you transform one into 40, that was the initial permutation, then 40 will be transformed into position one with the IP inverse. Now you can double check that. So one one is gonna undo the other. So the initial the initial permutation and the initial permutation inverse undo each other. Of course, if that was the only structure in this, that would be pretty bad because then the, that would imply that the plain text will be equal to the cipher text. But that's not what happens. What happens here is that, let me go back to the picture here. The most interesting part of this is going on here in this box. So that's the most interesting part. And the one that actually encrypts anything in this particular case is this guy go over here, whatever goes on in here. So, and of course, I, I will explain what that means uh, in this case. Now, you might wonder, you might maybe have this question, how, why they decided to design it like this? How do it like this? Now, nobody really knows, only the people in IBM know why was the reason that uh, this was designed like this. Notice that this does not uh, contradict the Kirchhoff principle, which is you have to make public your algorithms. These algorithms are all public. As you can see, I'm explaining this to you. And if you could go online, you can go on the web and maybe find some other explanation about the same structure of the ES. So all is public. Now, you don't have to make public why you did it like that. That's another thing. So what you have to do is make public your algorithm so people test them. Uh, and of course, we can study the structure and maybe see the weakness of this and all that. 
So, but the, the reason the permutations were added there at the beginning of the end, this actually doesn't add any kind of uh, strong encryption to the algorithm. The only thing that it adds really strong encryption is what's going on here inside this box, which is a lot more complicated than, of course, these two uh, permutations that are here. So basically the meat or the big part of DES is all hopping in here, of course, because that's what's going to take the key there. You see, the key has no role here in these two permutations. So uh, in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain a little bit what is the internal structure of these blocks here. And that's probably going to take several videos to have to actually explain what is going on here. So I'll see you in the next video.